everybody, Possum Patty here. It is June 23rd and I am nature journaling. It is hot, it is humid, it is summertime. You know, it was just that kind of a summer day that made you think back to when you were a child. Do you remember those hazy, lazy days of summer when you were a child? We used to go up into the dairy farmer's field and lay down in the wheat and just stare at the blue sky and watch the white clouds sail by. Or we'd get a book from the library and go sit up in the treehouse and read and read and read. And the days were so still and quiet. I just put out some banana pudding for the butterflies but I haven't really seen any butterflies and something's eating it up. So I put out the stealth cam. And I'm gonna see if I can get a picture of who's been eating the banana pudding. Over on the sand mound, I watched some bumblebees on some red clover. Before we head up the lane, let's take a look on the sand mound. See if there's anything new here. Well, there's some bumblebees on the red clover. They seem to be enjoying that. You should take a closer look at red clover because these aren't petals, but 50 to 100 little flowers in the head of the red clover. The clover is pollinated by the bumblebees. Red clover is grown as a fodder crop to feed animals and it's also used to fix nitrogen in the soil to make it more fertile for other crops to grow. There are many herbal uses for red clover and it's edible. Some people eat the flowers. And in some places it's actually grown as an ornamental flower. Oh, look at this little mullen. Usually they're quite tall, but this one's quite small, but it's got a nice bud on it. Maybe it hasn't had enough rain. The mullen is not native, but it can be an important food source for some birds. I'd say that this little mullen is just about knee high. Finches, chickadees, and downy woodpeckers will feed off a mullen plant in the wintertime. And they're after the seeds and insects that take refuge in the plant. Over by the shed, I found a blue toad flax. It's a very tall, thin, dainty, lavender blue flower, very pretty. Here's something fun over by the shed. Delicate purple and white flower. It's gonna be hard to see. I'll take a picture. I'm gonna to have to go look it up though. I don't know what it is. Very pretty. Little tiny skinny leaves. Tall, thin stem. It looks like it's got a lot of buds and it's got three flowers open. Along the lane, I went back to check on the red tall goldenrod aphids. I'm back here at the tall goldenrod again. Okay, so here I am trying to get a closer, clearer shot 
of the red, tall, goldenrod aphids. Like anybody would want to see that but me, right? I'm trying to get a little bit clearer picture of the aphids, the red goldenrod aphids. Yesterday's pictures weren't very clear. When I had looked up some information about the red tall goldenrod aphids, I found an article on how they are used for dye, and a woman was using them to dye some cloth. So I decided to try it on my journal page. Now, if you're squeamish, you should look away. Now, this is going to be horrifying, so don't watch. Look away, look away. Why am I smashing these red aphids? Because, guess why? You're right. They make red dye out of these. So this is not blood. This is just red dye from the shell of the insect. I wonder how many of these little things they have to collect up to dye material. Wow. So you can see the red stains on the paper. They faded a little bit, turned a little darker from when they were fresh. Also along the lane, I checked on the grapevine because I was looking for some flowers. Looking for grape flowers and in here next to those little tiny green blueberries, I think are some of the grape buds. I wonder when this blooms. Okay, this is on the grape vine. Is this a gall? Do grape vines get galls? Oh, one just fell. Huh, never seen that before. Now here's another one. Now these are turning red. And it's on the, it's on the grapevine, it's on the leaf. And it's on the stem. He's got to be galls of some kind. And doing some research on these grapevine galls, I found out that these are made by the grapevine midge, and inside there may be an orange larvae. Now, does that mean I need to do some further investigation on these? Thanks for coming along today on this warm summer day. Happy nature journaling. Bye-bye.